Hello everyone and now welcome to a 1v1 matchup, Yumiko versus Alex, this game taking place here on Rune Mall. Let's go ahead and get to the four or, or two minute mark, Yumiko opening things up with your standard altar of kings, barracks and farm. Meanwhile, Alex spawning over here on the opposite end under the green flag, opening up with the same exact thing. Heroes are going to be Archmage versus Archmage in this 1v1 matchup here as both sides kind of complete this wall-in procedure to try and protect themselves from any harassment. There is a little bit of walking distance between these two starting locations as indicated by this footman who is, well, just going to go ahead and do a little bit of scouting. Archmage of Yumiko going down south first, going after this 4-3 creep camp. Meanwhile, Archmage of Alex going after the Goblin Laboratory, going after this 6-4-3-2 creep camp, and will be getting level 2. We see the scouting footman. Yes, we do. Yumiko does know exactly where Alex is. Meanwhile, what, uh, the Yumiko's path is still relatively close to home. Going to be clearing out some more green creep camps rather than try and... Um, rather than try and... and um, well, rush towards those orange creep camps later on. Cobalt Geomancer first to be targeted as the Cobalt Geomancer does apply slow. You want to try and stop that slow from being applied to too many of your own units. Meanwhile, off over here, Alex is at level 2. He has picked up a potion of greater healing and is now making his way down south. That scouting footman there, well, is doing exactly that, keeping track of his opponent, knowing where he is so that he, so that Yumiko can also try and creep in a bit of peace. Another 4-3-2 creep camp here. Water Elemental going to come across. There's that second Water Elemental there. A little bit of damage. Yumiko should try and lose aggro for that Water Elemental. No, instead going to actually take the full damage there. Could have attacked uh, an Archmage and then switched back. Therefore, would have been clearing, would have been able to clear out of those creep camps slightly faster. Yumiko still, well, creeping on I mean, both sides. Um, with a map this large, really just trying to keep close to home, making sure that they have higher hero levels. I'm assuming that both sides are tr opting to get to level 3 as quickly Blade as four possible, four as we see Claws of Attack plus 5, the new new um, item on Yumiko. Wow, that wolf howl. Um, I don't know if it was my speakers or whatnot, but it actually sounded real um, here. All right, coming back through Yumiko and Alex. They are going to be going for a little bit of an exchange here. Going to try and drop down a water elemental. Here we are going into that engagement. The Shaman needs to be get cleared up as the Shaman has applied a good amount of frost armor across all of these targets here. Voidwalker going to get taken down. There goes another Ice Troll. And now it is the Shaman's turn to apply frost armor to himself. Archmage, I believe, will be just shy of level 3 here. I don't think a level 4 creep does it give. No, it does not give 75 gives 60 experience there, picking up a Ring of Protection plus 4. Off to the north, Alex has actually opt gone to level 3, has cleared out this Northern Expo, and is now, well, waiting perhaps for an Arcane Vault. Meanwhile, Yumiko's route is actually really strange and off. It's going to actually come up behind him, perhaps even try and clear out this green creep camp from the back. Here we are. Here we go. Arcane Tower. Yumiko's well, ever presence, a very, very important, knowing exactly where his opponent is, wanting to get some damage down onto a peasant or two. If he was able to finish off a peasant, that would be level three, and level two water elementals would make all the difference. Meanwhile, Panda is coming online for Yumiko. Yumiko's Breath of Fire. There's Level 3 are, and the water elementals should be flowing now as damage is racking up. Peasants, footman with defend. The Yumiko does have defend here, able to reflect back a little bit of that damage. Are we going to get a breath of fire? There we are, breath of fire. But the arcane tower is still alive and well, and looks like it will end up getting completed. Yumiko's water elemental looks like it is going to get en taken down as the panda looks to back away. Archmage tries to back off, is going to be able to finish off a footman there as the units, well, have a little bit of a scuffle. That tech to tier two by Yumiko getting early access to that panda, an extremely big advantage. Meanwhile, are we gonna be looking at a big breath of fire coming back across again? That is the question. There's a breath of fire and a bunch of damage racked up and absorbed by all of these peasants. 
Alex needs needs to get that expansion up and running and translate it into an economic advantage before Yumiko is able to put in too much pressure. All right, there's a water elemental. There's more breath of fire. And well, breath of fire blowing over these footmen rather easily. Yumiko's water elemental quickly summoned only to absorb a whole bunch of damage and now being forced to retreat back. Back in the base of Yumiko, we are looking at dual arcane sanctums, training up sorceresses and priests, and trying to get that tech advantage going quickly. By having higher tier units, um, well, they generally um, they generally provide provide uh, provide a bit of support and also a bit of um, a, a bit of healing and a debuff uh, on the battlefield. Right now, we're only looking at Alex with a bunch of footmen so far and uh, those water elemental. At some point, the 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 dispel magic from the arcane sanctum is going to help tremendously with those uh, priests against those other units bring a protection plus four and gauntlets of ogre strength handed off to the brewmaster as we're looking at the footmen here purposely backing away in order to regenerate some hit points all right archmage has a lot of or these priests have a lot of work to do to keep this army going as the brewmaster does get to level two and we are looking at a perhaps expo being set up by yumiko both armies are relatively far away from each other as the panda and the archmage are going to be going into a bit of an engagement here priest shouldn't be healing the water elemental um, should really be going after this forest troll warlord or trying to heal the larger more permanent units meanwhile archmage is going to come back around and perhaps come with a little bit of a creep jack yumiko's archmage is trying to hold the fort here and here we are here we go sorceress slow coming across water elementals being summoned up priests do not have that adept training and then now uh, well with slow being cast across multiple units alex's army was actually in a bit of a line and because it was in a line it is it was not going to be nearly as effective not arriving all to the party at the same time all right positioning such a big deal there you you saw yumiko with his foresight keeping that archmage at the crossroads able to intercept that archmage put in a little bit of damage and apply debuffs to the army before the army really even um, got there forest troll high priest high troll here panda could clear out this creep camp get very close to level um, level three and then perhaps um, wait for level three to become the um, to get the final job done all right Town Hall is up and operational. Tech to Tier 2 is nearly done by Alex. We're looking at a blacksmith getting um, getting online as well. No arcane vault here as we're looking at a well, drop inside the main base of Yumiko. Alex is, well, Alex is straight up in the economy here saying, you know what? You thought I was going to attack your main. I'm actually attacking your expo or, or attacking your expo. I'm actually attacking your main. But the panda is still sitting only at level two. Militia have come over to try and cause a little bit of problems. There's some dispel. There's level three already. And are we going to see that last water mental getting taken down? Yes, we do. Yumiko's dispel magic, um, extremely important in that fight, being able to, well, stop the water elementals before they really get going. And also gave level two to the brewmaster, who is now sitting um, at level two breath of fire with a drunken brawler over drunken haze. Also, good point to note, um, Archmage, uh, well, Archmage of... The, of Alex is sitting at level four, does have level two Brilliance Aura, but I don't believe he actually gets his own Brilliance Aura while he's in a Goblin Zeppelin. Um, there should actually be a, a video test of that. Um, I don't believe he gets the aura, uh, his own aura, and none of the, uh, obviously none of the units inside would get Brilliance Aura, but that, that's kind of a good question, right? Like, shouldn't your um, shouldn't your aura always affect you? Anyways, Archmage coming back across here. There's a quick drop-off here. Water Elemental now trying to make its way over as we're looking at a panda of Alex trying to push his way inside the main base here. Alex does have one Water Elemental. Yumiko's Water Elemental is going to dissolve into a puddle now, and this is just an absolute massacre inside the base. Panda is now over here as well. Archmage tries to come over to offer a little bit of protection. The Scout Towers are not getting ready, and I do not believe he was ready for this fight here panda now shows up to the party here i'm gonna see a breath of fire across all of these units no breath of fire why not that's a bunch of low hit point units and a missed opportunities as the brewmaster went shopping 
only to see well his own economy pretty much in shambles yumiko sitting at 40 over 50 supply now needs to get more lumber quickly and is now getting up a workshop here perhaps to try and up a flying machine and deal with this goblin zeppelin coming back across here there's a keep upgrading the castle we are also keep upgrading the castle as well these two guard towers or scout towers um, will be online here momentarily off to the north we are getting up a griffin aviary as well as this zeppelin just represents such a large threat panda coming back around are the two pandas going to see each other here no, they are not. They actually pass by in the middle of the night, and Yumiko perhaps still thinks that Alex is nearby. Army of Yumiko sitting inside of this base here trying to offer protection, but Yumiko is building a very large bank, 1,600 gold and counting, while still in low upkeep. Panda coming back across here, going to try and, well, just put pressure onto the main buildings. And well, with Breath of Fire, can actually blow over some of these buildings pretty quick. Level 1 masonry upgrades are completed here as the panda... Well, there goes another Breath of Fire here. Spellbreakers are also getting added in slowly but surely as we are looking at some repairs here. Come on, panda. Are we going to see another Breath of Fire? We should. There's another Breath of Fire taking down the peasant and could use a potion of mana. Meanwhile, big fight happening back off to the north. A bunch of, well, guard towers, uh, sorceresses, and priests trying to fight back an army of uh, footmen. Those footmen really don't stand a chance as Alex goes into tier 3 and now also has that paladin. So three heroes first for Alex as Yumiko tries to well, retreat back here. All right, level well 3.9 and 3.6 Archmage leading the charge with two level 1 heroes right behind. What is going on here as the Archmage now going to use the Scroll of Town portal and teleport back over to the Expo. Mortar teams are in position as well. And here we are, here we go. No Drunken Haze, just Breath of Fire. And Breath of Fire does blow over that mortar team just a little bit one more attack there as the archmage gets to level four giving level two brilliance aura to the panda 65 supply compared to 57 yumiko actually behind on supply and behind on gold remember alex has had the expo for far longer as they're going to be going into an engagement here a little bit more damage again as the knight is trying to catch up on to that priest why raise the horse if the little priest can almost run nearly as as fast. That's going to be a big problem there as the knight is just trying to get in some well, some killing blows in the back. Brewmaster still leading the charge once more with those boots of speed, but the paladin able to get in some more well, holy lights to try and neutralize and stop the damage. All right, coming back through. We do have griffins. Both sides has that paladin is Yumiko's what is Yumiko's plan at this point and stage in the game Alex did lose a couple of farms here those were quickly rebuilt but there is a good number of towers here are we going to see Alex's well well Alex's Dragonhawk rider quickly dodging there water elementals and Archmage should have perhaps tried to take them down meanwhile off to the north here Alex is looking to clear up as many creep camps as he can, perhaps try to get to level 2 as quickly as possible and get the um, Paladin's Divine Shield. All right, here we are into an engagement now. There's a quick shackle. Staff of Sanctuary saves from that shackle as that Water Elemental is going to get pushed off here. Alex is going to easily, easily clean up um, this Water Elemental as Alex is currently at 84 supply in high upkeep. Yumiko accidentally leaving behind a handful of Sorceresses is going to try and retreat treat them back this back line is very very vulnerable to well melee and just uh, damage in general you can't leave the back line in the front line of your army they simply don't have the hit points and the durability to survive that battle yumiko sitting at 75 supply currently he is mining more gold per second a little bit of slow getting cast there as the paladin well still not yet at level two all right, retreat all the way back into the base of Yumiko. Home field advantage is going to be a bit of a well, a bit of a difficulty as there are triple mortar teams able to well break down and force pressure inside of the main base. There's also enough dragon hawks here to deal with the dragon hawks and griffins of Yumiko. Both sides, of their engagement is going to be absolutely key as. 
We're looking at 80 over 82 supply. Alex really breaking in the high upkeep now, sitting in the low 90s. Yumiko in the low 80s in in low upkeep. I'm kind of surprised by that. I would have expected him to like act like purposely not go into low upkeep. Instead, he's going into low upkeep, trying to keep up with his opponent's army. Panda gonna try and engage here. Are we gonna see some breath of fire? Yes, we are. There goes a little bit of damage. And going after the Magnetar Reaver, I believe the Magnetar Reaver, is it? Yep, it is magic immune, meaning that the Griffins themselves can't do any real damage to it. Jingle of Endurance or a faster movement speed for that Brewmaster. We are looking at dual Staff of Sanctuaries for Yumiko versus Alex, who doesn't have one. That could be the difference there, not having a Staff of Sanctuary to try and save units that get shackled or are low on hit points. Dragon Hawk Riders, um, well, Priests do have Mastery Training, so we are looking at Inner Fire coming across from Alex. So both sides have similar army compositions, but different items and different upgrades. We're going into an engagement, and now, uh, we, do we see Cloud? Yes, Cloud has been uncast, um, so all of these towers currently not working. There is a shackle going across the board, and we're going to see a shackle now on to that one Dragonhawk Rider there. Both sides, Squirrel Town Portal needs to do a tactical retreat out. Yumiko able to teleport out 82 supply compared to 89. Inner fire on all of these Dragonhawk Riders and Knights opts for a large amount of effective hit points. Meanwhile, well, Panda getting stuck between a f um, stuck on the farm so to speak, needs to break out by taking one of his own farms down. Now, there are no there are no spellbreakers in Yumiko's army, which does come as a bit of a surprise. Um, inner fire, that's the reason why Alex is able to access inner fire. Um, spellbreakers effective when the opposing panda gets up to level five, but at this point in stage in the game, having um, having Spellbreakers ensures that you're not going to be on the, on the slow end of things as any slow that is cast on your units can be uh, uh, well, reapplied to your opponents. Yumiko is trying to lead the charge back here. Here we are. There's a good breath of fire across multiple stacked Dragonhawk Riders. And here we are going into the engagement. There's one shackle. There goes another shackle. Is this going to force an engagement here as both sides are just trying to shackle and blowing each other with breath of fire? Flying machines of Yumiko are using those flat cannons able to perhaps win out with a little bit more AoE as the Griffins are still picking off more units. Yumiko taking the supply lead now as Alex is the one forced to retreat. Breath of fire. Oh, it looked like there was an easy, easy attack there as Yumiko gets up to level 3 on the Paladin. 79 supply now compared to 87 as Yumiko is, well, still inching forward in this fight. There is still one gold mine down to the south with access on all three sides. It is a very exposed gold mine. We'll see if if it comes into play as there's only four minutes of mining left on the main base. All right, there's a little bit more sh um, cloud, breath of fire, griffin, uh, oh, trying to focus down some of those units. And well, going after the water elemental, a quick dispel magic could do the job right there. There goes a mortar team who is a bit out of position again. The Griffin Riders should really try to go after these um, these guard towers if if they want to, just for positioning sake, as the Archmage of Alex gets the level five first. Level five first, here we are, go into that engagement. There goes one tower already, both sides in that front line. 79 supply compared to 93. Yumiko able to push in higher and now has a bunch of flying machines that can't really do anything as there is no air units to try and counter. All right, Rifleman trying to join in on the battle. Griffin right or Dragonhawk Riders getting cleaned up. Staff of Sanctuary. Archmage trying to well, win out on this battle here, trying to summon up more water elementals as the Paladin falls at level two for Alex. Reinforcements coming across. More Staff of Sanctuary. And this is just looking better and better for Yumiko as the Griffin Riders are now switching their focus onto these towers, taking them down, and perhaps going to find even more easy, easy, heavy armored units to focus off. All right, Priests are now getting taken down as well. It is 87 supply compared to 73. Yumiko's armies of, army of flying machines not going to be able to do much as Alex's, uh, well, Brewmaster is in trouble. He is standing next to an arcane vault, could easily buy a potion of healing, 
um, but uh, does have an Ankh of Reincarnation. This panda is just going after all of these units. Perhaps can Breath of Fire all of them down. No, Yumiko actually looking to back away, going after the other pal or panda instead. Panda is going to come back up, stand back up, and perhaps try and fight back once more now that he well, has a bit more hit points. All right, you, it looks like Alex is going to be able to hold on to here, but um, but for how long? It looks like the game is already coming to an end. 5-4-3 for Yumiko, sitting at 80 supply compared to Alex with a Resurrecting Paladin, a level 5 Archmage, and a level well, 4 Panda. Goblin, well, as Yumiko goes back home, Probably going to visit, well, no, no Arcane Vault here, surprisingly. So not going to visit an Arcane Vault to get a Scroll of Regeneration before going back into the battlefield. Um, Panda wanting to get to level 5 here. Level 3 Breath of Fire would open things up quite a bit, but still 19 experience shy as the Archmage was just perhaps a bit too close. 80 supply compared to 76 griffins, priests, sorceresses, everything just running around now. All the creep camps on the map, save for one, have been cleared out. Is the panda actually going to try and clear that first before going into the next fight? Scroll of Healing, I do not believe, was purchased. A player's forces are under attack. Uh, as we're looking at... Alex clearing up this last creep camp here. That does give level 3 to Alex's Paladin. Is that the momentum he needs to get back into that game, having access to that 400 hit point heal? Remember, there are slight differences in skills. We are looking at Divine Shield compared to Devotion Aura. So Yumiko's army has a little bit more survivability, uh, but well, not accounting for Inner Fire as we are off to the races again in terms of damage. Both sides fighting their way through. Sorceresses of, um, well of Alex making work onto all of those units there as they try and retreat back out. Continuing with that pressure, Knight um, chasing after a Goblin Shredder. Goblin Shredder down to 257 hit points. Could easily get cleaned up. Water Elemental trying to head back across here. And Yumiko's going to lose his Goblin Shredder. Doesn't Staff of Sanctuary it as the Panda now comes up, but does not catch up to this group of casters. A slight breath of fire, but not enough to get any real lasting damage as we see a Mortar team getting caught in transit once more. All right, main bases have run out of gold um, for Alex. Meanwhile, Yumiko still has a little bit of gold left just because he was harassed earlier throughout this match. Goblin Shredder, Alex getting quickly taken down. Brewmaster, is he going to try and go after all of these units? No, just wanted to get to level 5 and now backing away. All right, some tactical... Um, hit and runs 84 supply compared to 83. I don't remember the amount of t uh, the number of times I've actually seen a high hit point or or high upkeep armies constantly fighting each other in a human versus human matchup. All right, Panda gonna get into position here. Perhaps Breath of Fire will blow things open in just a moment. 84 supply compared to 83. Alex has the supply advantage and here we are. Mortar teams gonna try and clear up the barracks first. That would stop any of the knights from being trained but that is absorbing a lot of damage instead of going after any of those casters. One knight does make his way back out and here we are going after all of these units. Are the mortar teams gonna get constantly get targeted by those uh, griffins? That is the question as Breath of Fire is continuing Continuing to just make it easy to pick off low hit point units. New flying machines are showing up to the party, but there is nothing for them to attack. Without the bomb upgrade, they are just uh, sitting there providing true sight on uh, no invisible targets. Breath of Fire blowing things over again. 68 supply compared to 80. Yumiko with the large supply advantage continuing to push back here. And I believe Alex will be forced to throw in the, um, the towel here as Yumiko, well, is still pressing quite firmly. Not quite sure why we still don't see the water or the fly machine upgrades, um, but then you want to be able to prioritize those other air units as we see a breath of fire blow over coming across there. All right, there goes the level four pallet or panda from Alex, and with that, Yumiko comes out on top. Alex with a lot of strong harassment in the mid game against Yumiko, even establishing up the. Uh, a base first 
but still unable to come away with the victory. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments below.